Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing today? DGIF, everyone. What a week. Hi, Mark, Sinatra, Surrender, Brock, how are you, Kevin? Okay, so yesterday I went through the exercise, you know, because we were on investing.com of, you know, the S&P making successive new highs after this break here we had in the S&Ps, and that was the key reversal uh, that we had in NASDAQ. And then we had another new high in S&Ps. And we had a lower high here, and then one more high in S&Ps up here. And we had a lower high here. And NASDAQ really took it on the chin yesterday. And if you want to see an ugly week, it was one thing to have a key of reversal on the daily. But, you know, we just missed making new highs this week. Uh, it was, I think, exactly the same high here and here. Might be different on different platforms. But check out the weekly. That's an ugly candle. It's also a two week reversal. So I think I was getting criticized for, you know, shorting S and P's at the 88.6 level. That was up here at, uh, yeah, you could see it better this way at the 32.60 level. And yeah, there was, you know, heat. Uh, S and P's don't look as weak. Of course, you know, uh, what led it up is leading it down, but we're back to about unchanged on the week in the S and P's but compare that to this candle. I don't care what you call it, rotation or not. This was our performance in NASDAQ all the way up from this March low. Steve would show the chart of the big spread that's probably gonna revert to the mean in the S&Ps versus NASDAQ 100 or FANG. And then since we were on investing.com, I just showed a few issues that, um, you know, everyone's long. Apple got hit hard. That's uh, two ugly weeks and a sell signal. So this is Apple. Okay. Pretty ugly. You have a couple of moving averages that could be it down here, 349 or 300. You know, most guys like Mark Newton, who I interviewed, were looking for more trouble in August. Uh, but, you know, you, you get tied into waiting for cycle dates and, you know, you miss things. So all I know is price action is pretty negative in Apple. Talked about Microsoft being able to get back to 200. Here we are. Back under 200, there's some problems here. And then I showed Google, which got clobbered. Okay, and Amazon. Uh, Amazon, to me, looks like 2,600 is viable, even if it's just a ABC. So uh, I think this week was uh, decisive in NASDAQ. Yeah. Okay, so that was a day after the new moon, Ben, and there was a planetary opposition with Saturn on Monday. So it was actually Wednesday, I think, was high. And in the S&Ps, it was yesterday, actually. So we made it, or, or it was Wednesday evening. Can't leave the week without talking about the spectacular move in silver. You know, I mean, look at this weekly chart. I could understand why uh, Steve would want to be a buyer at 19. So, like, I, you have to give it uh, hard to get on board something like this. I, I think that a lot of people would like to have a chance to buy it at 19. I don't know if they're going to get it that cheap. Maybe 20 and gold almost at new highs. You know, we are getting some divergences here and also a terrible week in the dollar. No reason 
You look at the dollar, it's a pretty ugly candle. It looks like we're headed towards this area. 92. Here's where all the stops are. So let's see what happens next week. That's uh, 94.65. Have we already taken it out yet? Okay, so we've already cleaned out the stops here. So now we'll see what kind of extension we could get over the next couple of weeks. Um, and it was interesting the other day when the S&Ps were selling uh, yesterday, when the market was selling off, it was doing so with a weak dollar. Okay, there wasn't a big bid. Yeah. We had a chance to buy silver uh, for months. I actually have physical silver, but I, I'm not going to rationalize it. I missed uh, the leverage play because I have, you know, silver coins all over the place. Um, What's your address again? It's uh, Marcos, <laughs> California. I, I think I bought them last year when silver was trading twelve, thirteen dollars, something like that. Just you know, I bought the. Uh, they call it junk, but they're beautiful. You know, silver eagle coins. It's not like they were the quarters and the silver when the U.S. had silver in their coins. They say there's a coin shortage in uh, the U.S. People are hoarding <laughs> their, their worthless quarters and nickels and pennies. I don't know. There's no copper in pennies if you think that there is. Anyway, uh, oil, you know, I, I, I gave it a chance. And you know what it held? It's pretty interesting here. The two week off number in oil was 4050. You know, you just count back a couple candles, 4058. We almost got there before the bounce. What was this low? 4071, so 13 points away from it. You know, this could go either way. Maybe it's just an ABC and we're going to blow again. But uh, here is the line in the sand for being long. Uh, crude oil. We take out 40, 50. I think we're going to 38 and a half and then lower. So that's kind of my review uh, for next week. I'm not looking for any type of uh, major reversal. I think we got some reversals this week. And when you have some reversals like you have here, um, normally you don't try and fade it right away. And uh, Blake and I have this line. There's a reason why you have this line here because it goes all the way back to historic, previous historic highs at that 97.80 level. And uh, I know there's an example of it. Yeah, look how it held it right here. Once we got above it, these were old historic highs. And look at that. And actually, if you just do it arithmetically from here, and uh, this is 700 points from here to here. So from here, it's going to take it to 97, 9700. And if that happens, I think we're going to see 84. So I think this was a pivotal week in NASDAQ. You know, you're not late. It's just like saying, uh, oh, you know, uh, I was late in silver because I didn't buy the March crash down here, you know, but you weren't late buying it here. You weren't late buying it here. You weren't even late buying the breakout over 19. So just because you don't catch the day of the high or the low, uh, don't let your head talk you out of a trade that's giving you um, confirmation that you have a high or a low. You don't have to be long from the bottom, short from the top to take a piece out of the market. So that that's my uh, motto is we're just here to take a section. We're like a surgeon. We're not going to, you know, disembowel everyone. We just want to take a piece. And uh, I know I'm this is self-talk that if I don't catch the turning point day, um, you know, then I feel late and I'm looking for maybe one more high or one more low to give me the opportunity to do what I didn't do previously. So just, you know, it's all in our heads. Don't let that talk you out of things. 
Yeah, I know. It's always easy in the rearview mirror. But, you know, wasn't easy to short stock indexes. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to remind everyone that the Friday is my favorite day to tell people to subscribe because they have all weekend to learn to navigate the site and get used to it. Uh, the team has been trading great, okay? Down a little bit here, down a little bit here. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Plus 2%, Blake booked it. Nice trade on Euro, and he shared it here in face too. Nice trade by Stephen Aussie, some small losses. Okay, so Blake's been pretty, you know, Blake's been pretty aggressive. He had a lot of pips coming his way, took advantage of the dollar weakness. So uh, Steve did too, and team's doing a great job. Let's see, 52% hit rate. So if you have good profit risk ratios and you're right half the time, you should make money if you manage your risk. So uh, good job by you and the team, Blake, and ca capturing nice pieces of dollar weakness over the last week or so. Way to go. Th thanks. Um, thanks. It, you know, uh, it, I mean, you know, we just have uh, a little bit of a little bit of a dollar breakdown, and I, I really don't think it's over yet. I, I but I, for now, um, I think you have to be pretty careful with dollar. Um, dollar shorts as as the euro is approaching some pretty key levels of resistance so um but i appreciate that um we gonna we're gonna go into some um we're gonna go into some charts here uh and, and talk about like where the euro's at and and you know um what other things are you know some of these other uh, markets are doing and um let's get into it and because I've, I've only got a i've got a few minutes and i, I have to be able to get the uh the bias chart done um but uh coach are you ready for the weekend are you kidding me <laughs> what are you doing you doing anything exciting <laughs> yeah Just i'm kidding. gonna uh, yeah i'm gonna <laughs> wear my mask and run around and try and sell my silver coins out on the street very nice uh speaking cash of, out a little bit speaking no, of, I, uh, I, you can still go to the beach here all right so yeah are they closed yeah. still they are uh no, they didn't reclose them. You could go to the beach and sit oh, on you, the beach. You can Don't go to the it. beach in Southern California. Well, that sounds good. Through a raging yeah. pandemic, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I I was I've been uh, hiding out since March or February, Blake. You, you, know? you know, the the thing is, I was I was reading um, something about the resurgence in in Australia, and the problem is, is I mean, look, you know, the problem that people have during a pandemic and and you know the, the, the is that psychologically it weighs on people so you have like australia you, going into a lockdown on a second a second time typically uh from what i was reading probably won't work because people are so lax you know the they, they have a hard time re-engaging that behavior of being in a lockdown so you know, if, if we if we have to go into a lockdown because we have a second wave in the fall uh, this year, uh, it's probably going to be worse than, you know, because people are just, you know, they're over it. I mean, I, I get They'll it. They'll have to enforce it with, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't see that happening. But anyway. All right. Hey, um, it is Friday. Uh, and yeah. we do have some stuff going on. So let's talk about the markets and let's talk about uh, the importance of where the Euro's at. And um, if you guys miss this chart, there's the um, Euro dollar, big multi-year trend line coming in, yeah. right? So if you're buying the Euro above 116, you've got to be very well aware that we're, we're knocking our head into this trend line. Now, if you take the, excuse me, sorry, if you take this trend line, you move it to the, to the top of the spike in back in 2014, it takes us to 118, 
where that's where our flag actually extends to. But what I what I think you you have to do initially is try to connect as many tops as possible, and that's going to take us to where we're currently at, about one sixteen fifty roughly. One sixteen um, was the high here yesterday. It was one sixteen twenty six. So I, I'm going to write that down is really key resistance is uh, one. 1625 that's key uh, now any dip in my opinion down to 115 is going to be a buying opportunity the question is uh like, like i said yesterday you know are we even going to be able to get down there do you i don't i don't know if you guys recall the analysis from yesterday but let me refresh your memory do you guys remember this and i said hey look it's kind of like a double top, but if it breaks lower, don't expect that double top to play out. There's buyers going to be down below and it's probably only going to just take out some stops and reverse to new highs. What happened? This is yesterday. Remember 24 hours yeah. ago, we were, we were talking about exactly that. The bear trap. Right? Yeah. Yep. It was a nice little bear trap and then it went up to new highs. Now, um, I, I still feel that dips are going to be pretty well supported here. So, um, you know, will we get a dip all the way down to 115? I don't know. I, I, but I do think that uh, the dips down to this level here at 115.50 are going to be really well supported should we get down there. So I'm going to write down 115. That was a great call, Blake. Well done. What? That yeah, was a great call. That? Awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, 115.50. We are in a bullish trend. Okay, so let's go over to the cable. So, uh, you know, the cable's above the 200 day moving average. And that's the thing that we have to keep in mind. We're above this uh, this this downtrend line. You see the, the uh, 200 day moving average holding above there. Still, I believe that any dips back down to 126.70 should find support. Okay, um, resistance, uh, the 161% extension of this move takes us to 127.90 in case we start squeezing. Okay, but we are bullish, especially while we're above 126.50. All right, whoops, um, trying to just get this stuff done. So for you guys, uh, Aussie. We've come down to 70, the low today is 70.63, so 70.70 was the breakout point, remember that? So today's low is 70.63, so we have to write down 70.70. And then 70, because that was the breakout point, right? That's going to be key support on dips. Um, resistance, as Steve pointed out two days ago. Big trend line coming in here. Also, that line big... worked. Steve, I'm that already line... patting... uh, Steve. Yeah. I'm already patting you on the back. You don't have to. Pat I know. Me. I know. I know. I didn't say it about that. I, to be honest, I was hesitant at the beginning, but it really worked. <laughs> it did. Also, one of the things that really works too is a big Fibonacci level. Which, if you take this high from here and you take it to the low, the 618 retracement comes in at 71.15, 71.30. So we roughly hit that too. It's, it is just a confluence of resistance that really stuck. So, um, and you, you can also, you could also say that coming out of this triangle, you know, you know, we can completed a move out of the triangle. There's just a lot of confluence up there. So just realize that 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 you know and and on top of it the nasdaq really started to roll over yesterday one of the one of the things that um that we have to keep in mind that happened overnight is there is a increased um uh uh, uh rhetoric b bad rhetoric china. against china and the u.s yeah i mean china yeah. told us to close our consulate we closed one of their consulates i mean it's it's not like you know still heating up huh it's still heating up. It is heating heating up, and then on top of that, you've got 
Um, you know, some of the, the, you know, these leadership stocks um, that are just, you know, they're getting rolled right now. And when there's such a big um, portion of the, the market, you know, the, these NASDAQ stocks, they come off. And even if you get some rotation, um, you know, the, they tend to be the leaders. So you're probably going to see a little bit of selling come in. And that's that's the risk I think is building for uh, the Aussie and the yeah. Kiwi up here. <clears throat> they led on the way up. Why shouldn't they lead on the way down? They could, but again, if, but more, if, if it's new money coming in and then if it stays in the market, right? If it's just rotation, yeah. it just, it, go, it goes, you know, goes out of Netflix into, you know, Ches IBM. not Chesapeake. I was almost going to say Chesapeake, but so, so, you know, some energy stocks or, you know, yeah. some, or some, you know, something else, some mining stocks, you know, you just get, you get a bit of a rotation. Um, but anyway, I, I, I got to get off that. I got to, I've got to continue on here. Um, so resistance is 71. Uh, yeah, 71.83. So I'm going to write just 7175, but even today resistance is going to be ahead of that. So probably right up to here, 71 and a quarter. 0.7125 is going to be resistance. Still bullish though. Let's not forget that. Kiwi 66 66 cents bullish. 6685 same as yesterday for the kiwi it didn't you know it's just um we had a little double top here that double top played out this support should be good um for today but we break below that that that'll be pretty bearish let me just do something really quick 38 percent retracement 50 percent retracement comes in just basically a pip or two below the 66 cent level. So yeah, if we break below 66 cents, it's not going to be, that's uh, going to be kind of bearish. So just keep that in mind. Um, uh, dollar Canadian. So the dollar Canadian, we created a hammer yesterday. Some of you got to pay attention to. Uh, we created a hammer and a higher low. So I think any move back up to the 200 day moving average is going to be a resistance up to 135. But t for today, uh, let's look at 134.80. 134.80. And I'm going to still keep it range because we never hit new lows. So we never really put us back into a bearish trend. So it's just right now, it's just in a range so dips down to probably this low right here uh 133 134 is going to be pretty well supported on dips all right dollar swiss uh let's dollar swiss now we are at a weekly trend line right now uh this was the chart of the day yesterday so for obvious reasons, this is going to be pretty key support here because if we break this, then you know that's going to get pretty ugly. And that comes in at ninety one ninety. Okay, it was a chart of the day. It was a chart of the day, yeah. Ninety one ninety. What's that? I pay attention to him. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you were you were confirming that was the chart of the day. Yeah, you yeah, know, it yeah. it is, yeah. Um so we we're oversold, obviously, on a daily four hour divergent. I don't I I I don't know where res well, I guess resistance at this point. To, to really like ignite like some sort of short squeeze looks a, looks a lot like the dollar yeah I, I mean my assumption would be it's probably right around here um 92.70 ish you know I, I guess so hold on one second guys 
So yeah, 9270, I guess. Um, may, maybe even, I would probably even go with 93 cents, you know, somewhere up here. Like that, that's probably gonna be decent resistance today. We are a bearish, we're in a bearish trend. Um, let's uh, take a look at the dollar yen. So the dollar yen in Asian trade. Now keep in mind, last night was a Japanese holiday. So of course, you know, it breaks when it's a Japanese holiday because they know that there's no bidder here and it just slumps, slams through the support. So uh, now any move back up towards 106.60 is resistance. 106 is critical support, right? That's like critical support down here, 106. So now I think bulls are got to be a little careful, especially if uh, if we start breaking. Now the flip side to that is, if the dollar starts rallying a little bit, we might you know be able to get back above 10660 possibly. Well, we'll see. Um, all right, we are in a range with the dollar yen, dollar index. Let's go over to the dollar index. Do we have data coming out today, guys? Uh, we do have, uh, actually not now, not in two minutes. We have okay. later on, yeah. Okay, got it, thanks. So 94, so we're on support right now. Um, you can see it right here, right? We're on horizontal support at this 94.55. The 618 comes in at 94.45. Uh, I'm sorry, 161% extension of the dollar index um, last bounce. So we might actually get to 94.45. It's possible. We are in a bearish trend. Now, you know, obviously the risk of a, you know, creating a, a you know, a, a bottom here or a low and then, you know, spiking back up to 95.60 is, you know, pretty good. So just keep that in mind. But while we're below 95.60, it's a bearish trend. Uh, dollar Mexican peso. So the dollar Mexican peso, I'm a little irritated because it was just trying to take out all of the stops above these highs, above this trend line, and it just slipped back below 42.50. It's very, you know, the dollar Mexican peso is very illiquid and it's very or it's very flow driven. So you can see it. It just you know got slammed down. You can see it just got slammed down over the last 30 minutes, you know, as it pushed back below 40 or 2250. But what we are doing in the dollar Mexican peso is we're not creating lower lows. And that, in my opinion, is keeping the risk of a bullish move there. So just, you know, keep that in mind. We have to, I, I, I think that if we get back above, um, 2272 that's going to be bullish uh, support down here is going to be at 2225 you can see the false breakdown um, we'll probably find some support down here anyway this area right where we're at nothing like a little false breakdown and then it squeezes back up again it's just that's pretty typical of this pair it, you get a lot of false breaks back and forth so um, 22.25, support, resistance, 22.70. Uh, it's a range, but we are threatening to break to the upside, especially if we can get a good, solid daily close. The US dollar Nor Norwegian Krona, um, this currency pair almost hit the, the long-term uptrend line here 127% extension at 9.03. We came within striking distance of that. And I think that that was a pretty good support down here. So that's gonna be, by the time we get to this trend line, it's gonna be 9.05 roughly. Okay. Um, 
resistance. This downtrend line comes in at right right around here. So I'm gonna actually have to mark up like these highs here. So that will be at 931. We break through that and whoops. If we break through 931, it's gonna take off this bearish designation, in my opinion. Uh gold. Still bullish, still moving. I, you know, I keep thinking it's going to pull back, but it ain't pulling back. Uh, those highs come in at 1923. Oops. So all time highs and support is at uh, 1820. And let's see, uh, the S&P. So the S&P, we are at risk of a little bit of a pullback here in the S&P because we basically hit the 88% retracement. And it looks like right now the 3,300 is gonna be, is gonna offer some pretty good resistance. Whoops. Okay for now, but the support here is now at risk. And if we break through 3,200, that is going to be a bearish event for equities, okay? Whoops. So we're bullish now, but if we get below 3,200, um, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna probably see, I, I would assume, that we're gonna see a little bit of selling back towards the 200 day moving average if we can break 3,200. So that would take us back down towards, you know, 3050 roughly. All right, um, so guys and gals, this is your bias chart. Steve Stelios, how are you guys doing? Good morning, everything good and you? Good morning, good mate. It, it is Friday, it's Friday. It yeah, baby. You guys, I know being in Greece, you guys can, um, you know, go to different islands and travel around. And I'm going to go to my backyard <laughs> and crack a beer. Now I'm going to walk inside after I'm done. And I'm going to go back in my backyard. Option, you always <laughs> have the option of uh, getting a backyard in Greece. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now that, that, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, but that, that is what's too bad is Greece won't let us in. That's the, that's the other issue. I, Don't worry. I, I, I know some people. Don't worry. <laughs> my wife looked at, my wife looked at uh, a list of um, countries that would let Americans in. And it's very small. It's like, uh, I want to say it was like eight or 12 countries will let us through their Flying. And this is like last week or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty sad. <laughs> that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty sad. Anyway, um, uh, uh, but I don't know. Then this has probably changed a little bit. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're still in quarantine over here. So, but it is Friday. At least I get to uh, disengage from my computer. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's always so, good. So what do you guys make of, uh, what do you guys make of this, um, um, you know, this dollar? I mean, the dollar still looks pretty weak uh, overall. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I think we're, we're, we're knocking our head up against some pretty key support with the dollar index down at the, um, at this, you know, 9450 level. What do you guys, what do you guys make of the dollar? I mean, I'm overall, I'll just let you guys know I'm bearish the dollar, but I, 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 I don't think I, I I don't think we can rule out a bounce at this point. I'm kind of impressed from the divergence we're seeing. I mean, you know, so far we've had like a little bit more than 24 hours of, you know, very decent uh, risk off. Of course, nothing in comparison to what we got at the end of February and March, but, and the dollar really can't find a bid for the time being. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a serious support area. So I wouldn't be sorting it here, but I have to say that if I was bullish the dollar, I would be really troubled by the fact that it doesn't seem to even respond in in a risk off for the time being. Yeah, I I agree with you. It's it really is, is very much struggling 
um, it's very much struggling right now. And, and, and it's just not catching a bit. I, I mean, I look at like, I, I, I look at the commodity currencies a little bit different in a different lens than I do the European currencies. And so what we are seeing is we're seeing the Aussie is easing off the Kiwi is to um, the Canadian and, and those commodity currencies being a little softer uh, than, you know, the rest of the market that that to me is pretty important to to realize that it's not that that there is there is some divergence there and we're seeing it obviously you look at the euro aussie euro new zealand pound aussie pound new zealand you're seeing those cross rates are bidding up and um that is indicative of of some risk off but i think we have to be a little bit you know we have to we have to pay attention to how the dollar is acting against certain currencies versus others. To be, to be also fair, since you um, mentioned the commodity currencies, Blake, and that's something that people have to have in mind, to keep in mind, is that uh, the dollar index, as we've said multiple times, is very, very heavily influenced uh, by the complex of euro and its correlated uh, currencies like the Swiss and the um, SEC and also by cable and we know that these currencies um, you know none of these are commodity currencies so commodity currencies are really uh, a rather small um, segment of the DXY so you know that's that's something that is worth mentioning yeah yeah they are um, they, they, they really are I mean the, I actually if you look at the breakdown, I mean, the biggest one that's factored into the, the dollar index is really the Canadian. I think that's maybe at 13%. So, um, yeah, you know, that's why that you really should be paying attention to what's happening with Norway, Canadian, Aussie, Kiwi, even the, even the emerging market currencies, whether you're talking about the RAND or the, the, the peso. You know, those are, you have to look at them in a little bit different light than other currencies. So... All right, guys. Well, I, I won't take away from your time uh, any more from your time. I, I want to thank everybody who is uh, supportive of Forex Analytics. For those of you guys that are, you know, um, you know, with the, with the family and and have uh, you know our subscribers to to what we offer. And if you're not and and but you want to um, uh, help us uh, continue on with these face webinars. Uh, make sure you visit Forest Park FX. They are a webinar sponsor. They are also, um, you know, they, they help us with the reimbursement program. So make sure you get in touch with them. They're, uh, you can Skype with them or email them right here off of our website. Um, so thank you all for your continued support. And um, Steve Stelios, I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. And, and good weekend, 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 Blake. And you too, Dale. Yes, yeah, so you guys have a great weekend. Um, Dale, don't get too much sand in your, in your, in your trot. <laughs> right. I'll try not to. All right. Let's see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. You know, speaking it's, it's, of the, go on. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I was just like, you know, I, I thought it was, uh, you know, I dare I say, it, you know, cute that Steve, <laughs> after all these years of doing this, is still tickled when he comes up with a line. <laughs> that works <clears throat> you know it still amazes you doesn't it yeah like, yeah i mean uh, you know yeah you know what people ask me steve sometimes dale how do you draw your lines do you know what i uh tell them <laughs> what do you tell them with my imagination that's actually very true nice. yeah so you know uh, it, you can draw lines everyone out there you could always erase them but experiment, use your eye, visualize things and draw a line. You're, you're going to see, you're going to be able to do what Steve did with that line eventually. Anyway, that was I'm assuming funny. drawing lines must be in my genes since both my parents are architects. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That could be. It's a DNA, man. Anyway, that was a great line in Aussie. Nice. nice. So, um, speaking of the dollar... Uh, the DXY index. I was uh, I, I posted the chart on the um, chat room a few days ago. There's a on the weekly chart. There's a, a big support trend line from the 2014 lows, and we got to within a few 
uh, decimals from that, so a few pips from that. Um, but you know, I think the dollar basically is still going to be trading uh, in line with risk. Uh, and um, just like Blake said, I think it will take a, a, a strong move this in equities. One, still, yes, yes, this one, Stelio, we drew it together. This one, yes. Huh? yes. Um, there's oh. going to be a strong, it, it will take a strong Good move. imagination on that one. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I think it will take a strong move in equities for the dollar to really spike like it spiked in March. I think like Blake correctly said, if it goes slowly and grinds, if equities slowly grind lower, the reaction of the dollar, it's going to be there, but I don't think it's going to be that, um, that uh, you know, big. So... You know, I am still a long-term bear in the dollar, but I think we will see one more spike as equities uh, have a turn lower. I mean, I'm crazy, right? I'm saying that equities are going to have a turn lower. I, th I still think they're going to have one. And um, Say so it as many what... times as you like, as, as, uh, as it still remains legal, because one day soon <laughs> enough, it's probably yeah. going to be some kind of an offense implying that stocks might turn lower. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you're seeing now stocks like Intel down 12, 13% pre-market, Tesla down 7%. And, you know, Fangs are still keeping markets higher. But uh, eventually, all that uh, money that's piled into those uh, eventually is going to start, uh, you know, either profit taking or, you know, the... Um, uh, you, it's yep. really funny that you mentioned it. Uh, Dale said before, you know, that Apple got destroyed. And, you know, it, it makes you think, you know, the kind of market environment we're into. I mean, uh, yes, it was a very negative day yesterday for, you know, plenty of these stocks, as you mentioned. But just think about it. I mean, with all that that's, that's happened this year, you know, you get like a couple of days of risk off and Apple is at what was all time highs like four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's put it into perspective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, putting it in. I mean, zooming out, just you know, zoom yeah. out and try to figure out, you know, where the pullback is. It's I mean, not it's, even a blip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know, if you look at the uh, the world situation, the global situation, Blake mentioned it. China uh, said that they they ordered the U.S. to close uh, one of the consulates in one of the cities. I can't remember which one. Uh, as a retaliation to what the Americans did with Houston in Houston, so it's not um, it's not an ideal situation. Let's put it this way: globally, and you want the two biggest powers in the world to get along, and not to be fighting over trade or, God forbid, anything else. So um, I still think the situation is not good. It's not positive for sure. Um, Obviously, Trump said, uh, President Trump said yesterday during his briefing or press conference that the trade deal doesn't mean as much to him anymore. The what? And the what, are you, uh, what are you talking about? The what? The phase, one, phase one of the theoretical thing that might have happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is, there, is that still a thing? I thought it belongs in the um, category of Santa Claus. You know, some yeah, kids anyway, up to the was, age of four believe in it, but... You know, he's blaming China for yeah. COVID. You know, they, it shouldn't have gotten out of there. So his, really what he, I think he was implying was compared to COVID being released, a trade deal doesn't mean as much to him anymore yeah. because he blames them. Well, that's a very good point. And it shows that both sides are really not, uh, uh, you know, not seeing eye to eye at the moment. It's a cold war. Mark Chandler said a year and a half ago, it was a cold war. We just have to hope and pray it doesn't turn into you know, a hot one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, that would be... Although, although I'm going to reiterate what I've said in the past, uh, hope and pray is not, you know, yeah. a real viable uh, tactic, right? Okay, I mean, well, if you, a bomb shelter. If, if, you, <laughs> if you really want to have the upper hand in, in, in a cold war against China, which I think we, you know, we all do, uh, you know, the first and most important thing you can do is not being so much reliant on China for them to vendor financing, for example, the economic model that supposedly you, you know, you, you have uh, as a country or for them to, to not need them to hold more than $1 trillion um, of debt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's one thing saying, you know, uh, you know, we have a cold war and this different thing 
actually doing something to not care about it. I mean, uh, you know, when there was the uh, original Cold War between um, uh, the U.S. and Russia, uh, the U.S. won because, first of all, of, uh, of, you know, the Western values, but also extremely importantly, because it had a very strong economy and the Russian economy was at the brink of collapse. Yeah, because they couldn't keep up with defense yes, spending. exactly. Right? So we outspent them. In which sense, is what yes. we're good at. But, yeah, but you know something, to be fair. Back we then, had the money to do it. Then. Yes, there was still a lot of wealth that had been created during the past decades to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think this uh, COVID situation is changing the way companies source their their goods. You know, their uh, supply chains are changing. So in a way, things are already already changing a little bit in what you said, Steve. So the U.S. is becoming less reliant, but still, there's a long way to go for sure. Um, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of other things I want to mention. The one trillion minimum stimulus pa- plan for, from the uh, in the U.S. has been delayed until Monday. Uh, let's see what happens there. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt they're gonna they're gonna roll. Yeah, it yeah. There's no there's no doubt whatsoever. There's no chance yeah. uh, they're not gonna do something. It's yeah, it's all is, about agreeing and yeah, finding. And politics, yeah, more yeah. politics. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we also did have some data today. Um, UK retail sales uh, blew it out of the sky. Very good data. Of course, this is a very volatile series, uh, but uh, you know, expected, uh, what was it? 8% month on month when it came in at 13.9%. But remember, there was huge drops before. Uh, and we also got PMIs out of the U- uh, UK, Europe, you know, Germany, France, and the Eurozone in general. And they were all very good beats. So... <clears throat> It seems that things are going uh, a little bit better. Remember PMIs, you know, they're printing in the mid 50s. It doesn't mean we're back to where we were three, four, it five. It means we've, st- so. we've stabilized. Yeah, we've stabilized and grinding a little bit higher. It's a start, of course, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and think that things are uh, back to where they were before. Um, and we do have US PMIs coming up in about an hour. And uh, that is it. And have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> okay, Stel. Great. Uh, thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. And thank you, Steve. Thank you, Dale. Yeah. Uh, y- you know, we- we'll speak, but I'm not going to be on the webinar next week. Time for some holidays and family days. Yes. So yes, let's enjoy, enjoy yes, Stel. No island hopping this weekend. No, no, we're here. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he did so much of it that he even got bored of vacations. I mean, go yeah. figure with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell? yeah, I'm okay. here. <laughs> now you're, now you're going to be here and, and I'm ga- just going to be jumping on the webinar to show you. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking yeah. a vacation next week, Steve? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it's nice. long overdue. Okay. Um. Okay, so um, what do we have? You know, the m- most important thing we got is summary scope. And if you remember, we did talk yesterday about the possibility of actually seeing summary scope because we started seeing some signs. Uh, if you remember during the webinar, I said, listen, you know, the Aussie has turned lower. Uh, the treasuries are pushing higher. Uh, equities are always the last one to get the message. Um, you know, a lot of divergence is there, so there is a chance that we're going to see um, a reversal lower. Uh, and, you know, curiously, it, it indeed happened with uh, the usual suspects of the move higher, which are, you know, the funds uh, being the ones that are leading the move lower. And, uh, you know, that, that's why we, we should talk about this chart, because, you know, this is the fang chart. And um, we're actually uh, about to test this, um, you know, key support area, a break below it, um, I think can easily start by extending because this is almost a double top. I mean, if you take the real uh, candle bodies. So, you know, a move lower from there should extend towards uh, 1,000. And, you know, that would imply that we're breaking through this very steep ascending channel and that might actually point to a bigger pullback. The S&P not so much affected yet. I mean, there is no real technical damage 
done to the S&P yet. And to be fair, there is no definite technical damage done to the Nasdaq as well, because it's testing this horizontal support area. Uh, it's also testing this trend line support. It, somebody can make the argument that uh, we've already broken through uh, one steep ascending wedge, but we would definitely need to see more evidence and, you know, the basic, um, you know, the basic material of a turn lower is always producing, start producing lower lows initially in, in, in smaller time frames until you actually can, you know, visibly see that on a daily chart as well. So um, let's see if the markets can sustain another move lower and can actually hold um, you know, this negative tone into the weekend and, you know, see how Monday uh, goes. And I, I think that then we can start seriously talking about uh, downside targets. Now, clearly, if, uh, as I was discussing yesterday, if we indeed see a reversal uh, lower, in this case, you know, one day later, uh, we have more evidence that that might be the case, that we might be attempting to do something like that. I would expect that at the very least, that's going to slow down, uh, you know, the fall uh, for the dollar. Keep in mind, the dollar is currently probing uh, the area um, uh, below this spike low, which in essence takes us back to where we were almost two years ago. September 2018 was the last time we were uh, trading at these levels. Um, you know, this is also more evidence in what I have been saying for a long period of time, that this whole recovery in the dollar, no matter how you looked at it, really looked to be corrective, seemed to be corrective. And, you know, evidence about that is, let's take the level that we're currently testing, September 2018. So from September 2018, when we were last time trading at these levels, let me remove the magnet, it took for a 9% move higher, 543 days, not trading days, days, okay? So 540 days, let's say roughly, to you know, get that 9% move higher. Now, let's see how long it took to go back to this level from that high. 126 days. So basically, it took less than one quarter of the time that we needed to go up there to retrace to that level. You know, um, price, and price movement are important, but it's also important putting in context the time. Because, you know, it's, it, it's an important part of the equation. It's not only where you're going um, and in what manner you're going, but it's also how fast you're doing it. Because that is usually a very good indication of where the trend is. So, you know, I have to say that I would be very, very worried if I was bullish the US dollar in, you know, any shape um, or form. But, you know, as we said before, if we are to see some risk off here, and given the fact that we're testing previous lows, I would, you know, clearly not advocate that somebody should be selling the, you know, the dollar as we speak right here, right now. But I would definitely not be a buyer either. I think selling rallies is, you know, a better idea uh, doing it as we speak, you know, after this move lower, probably not the best of ideas, especially, as I said, if this risk of manifests. Now, you know, if you want to look at it from the effect side, we talked about the Aussie yesterday and the day before yesterday and where it got rejected from. Admittedly, so far, you know, we haven't really moved far away from the rejection area. So it's not like that you're looking at this chart and you're saying, oh, Oz is getting destroyed or anything uh, close to that. Kiwi, same deal. Somebody could argue that it's just backtesting the breakout from this triangle, in which case, you know, somebody can buy it as we speak. And from a risk reward perspective, uh, you know, 
make an argument that you know that's that's actually quite a nice trade. Um, a little bit more worrying if you switch to the Aussie yen and the Kiwi yen, uh, simply because both of them seem to be attempting to form some type of a double top. Here is the Aussie yen, and here's the Kiwi yen. As you see, very very similarly, uh, got rejected from the previous highs. So. Um, you know, I, I have to say that looking at the Aussie yen and the Kiwi yen, you know, you have a, every reason to be a little bit more worried. Let's see what's going to happen from current levels because both of them are back testing. Here's the Aussie yen back testing this question mark triangle. Was this the triangle? Because, you know, it's not that we had many uh, areas from which this trend line passed, so it's a little bit arbitrary. Uh, I mean, the trend line might have been something completely different. And here's the Kiwi yen. Also, you know, I'm not very much in love with this trend line, but I put it there. Um, so let's see what's going to happen from here. Uh, now, you know, um, if we were having this conversation, if I have, if I was actually having this monologue, to be, <laughs> to be exact, um, uh, several months ago, you know, I would make the argument that this move that we're seeing lower from the USD yen is also indicative. Uh, of a potential risk of move coming, but having seen how USD yen is really not following uh, risk um, lately, I, I would be less enthusiastic. Uh, regardless, this 106 area is an important area of support. So 106 um, is a key level of support from a technical perspective, and you know, despite you know, showing a lot of disbelief in how much a USD yen move might tell us after, you know, having spent all this period coiling and coiling and coiling and pr producing false breakouts as it happened three times back here. Um, you know, regardless if you really still believe that USD yen is, you know, sending signals, a move below 106 is definitely not going to be a good signal for uh risk assets okay um so 106 and below 106 we we should be looking for 105 20 the 61.8 percent fib and below that we're probably going to accelerate and i would you know easily uh imagine a retest of the 101 20 level that we had uh seen very briefly down there um, so, you know, USD yen might, for the first time after a long period of time, uh, be coming again in the scope of, you know, tickers you might want to be paying attention to. Um, now, you know, Euro USD, Pound USD, they remain very well bid. And keep in mind that these pairs can, you know, do decently even through risk through a risk off environment so you know if we see risk off yeah we might see them pull back uh but you know don't really expect that risk off will seriously affect them i mean uh i you know looking at them and especially at the euro i don't find it very likely that we're going to see more than a pullback to 114 uh, I, I think that 114 is going to be uh, perceived as an excellent area uh, to buy the pair, and I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of buying interest down there, unless you know something dramatic has happened that will have made you know the euro look like a you know very bad uh, opportunity. But I don't think we have anything coming out of Europe within the next few weeks uh, that might you know really uh, scare uh, investors away. So I, I do think that 114, a, re, a likely retest of 114, might prove to be an excellent buying opportunity. Same I deal. I think there's something big August 8th, Steve, was, uh, according to some guy I interviewed um, last week. Some type of European vote. On, I, I, don't, know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Dale, anyway. I, I, I really don't. I remember that from an interview, and he was. What I there. what I can tell you with certainty, Dale, and I, I know I know you're agreeing with that, is that euro is really sending signals here, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I don't think somebody should be fading it. I, I think it 
it's very likely to pull back soon, as I think it's likely to see some type of a pullback rather soon from gold or silver. Although I'm going to say again and again and again, I'm not looking to fade them. I'm just looking in buying opportunities. So I'm not looking to be short in any type, shape or form, gold or, or silver, not today, not next week, not the week after that. Uh, but and the same you know, with the dollar. You're looking for, you know, yeah, no long dollar positions. Just, just selling to fade the dollar, any dollar rally, yeah, buy any precious metal break. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, I, I really, I'm afraid that we're not going to have that opportunity. But you know, if we get lucky and we see silver at nineteen dollars again. I'm not letting that go. I'm I'm going to be buying a lot of it at nineteen dollars. I'm telling you in advance. Um, now, having to do with gold, you know, I'm not so eager to buy gold. I have, you know, it, I have a decent amount of physical gold, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm okay. What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> and that's by line anyway. <laughs> Using my own line on me. That's you, you'll go. find out when you visit Greece. All right. <laughs> you'll come over for dinner. All right. Um, now, having to do with upside targets, keep in mind that 1919 roughly is a very beautiful confluence of resistances. It's both the all time high and 20. Um, 261.8% extension of the last corrective move we had in gold. So I, I still believe that it's going to act as a magnet. I do believe that the market is going to gun down for, you know, getting that uh, tag and, you know, a spike, at least a spike higher to new all time highs. We've been working warning since a long time ago that it was a matter of time for uh, gold to also get to all-time highs against the dollar because it had already been doing so against probably all other currencies on the planet. Yeah. Um, yes. So Dollar was the last one, I think. Yeah, it was the last, the one, last one, but my prediction is and has been that I think dollar has some serious catching up to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe with euro strength lately, maybe in euro terms, gold is backing off. We with can, the strength in the euro. We can have a look at it immediately. I doubt it's backing off. Probably it's more or less, yeah. So, sorry, it is testing previous highs, as you see there. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I remember when we were looking at that formation. I mean, it was yeah. such a beautiful textbook. I mean, you know, you can't get a better looking corrective move than this one. I mean, this type of move is like, you know, 70% of the, of the cases yeah. you're going to see such a move, it's it's going to break in the direction of the previous trend, as as it happened indeed. Yeah. So as you see, Dale, uh, actually gold is retesting today. Actually, tested the waters at new all-time highs against the euro. Mm -hmm. I think it's about it does the same thing against uh, the dollar as well. Okay. Um, now let me go through some of your questions. Silver, why not to? I'm assuming you want to write why not buy options on gold yeah, or in silver. It. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I'm giving you my market outlook. Now, the type of instrument, the amount of leverage, the uh, position size, you know, all those are the choices each one of us has to make individually. So, for example, you know, whenever I'm saying, oh, I think this is bullish or, you know, this is bearish or whatever, you know, you, you know, you, you agree with me, you want to, you know, you want to trade in that direction. Now, you know, what type of, type of instrument you choose, you know, how much money you want to invest in that, you know, that's purely your choice, right? I mean, um, it's definitely against regulations for me to tell you that, but even if it wasn't, you know, I, I would still not do it because each one of us has a totally different appetite for risk, has a totally different size of a trading account likely, has a totally different tolerance uh, for risk, perhaps totally different timeframes that we want to trade. I mean, 
you know, you you might go crazy if if you have to stay in a position for two weeks. Yeah. I, I and find And you know it what? From, from my experience, Steve, they they really shouldn't blindly just buy calls especially after a move like this you have like implied volatility you could have a situation where you, you buy silver calls and it just moves sideways and yeah. premium and then decays. they expire they, they expire decays. worthless yeah. yeah yeah they expire yeah. worthless although you're in generally uh positioned in in the correct you know uh, yeah. side of the market yeah you i mean it's very likely up. yeah i mean speaking of which and and given the example you just gave after such an explosive move higher, I mean, even a super bullish market can Correct. produce something like, you know, something like this, right? Who knows? Yeah. So, you know, you might be like, oh my God, this is going to the moon. And it's, it probably is, by the anyway, way. Anyway, learn about options before you buy them. Yeah. Okay. You so know, you, where you, there's times you could buy a call and sell a higher call against it, verticals. There are many ways that you can kind of take the, uh, have decay not completely work against you. So learn about them before you buy. Know what you, uh, buy what you know. Now, about what our friend is asking here, uh, what about platinum? I, I had said many, many times in the past that for me, 875 was a key pivot area in platinum. So needless to say, uh, from the moment we closed above 875, you know, I'm, I'm clearly bullish. I mean, long term, I was always bullish. I, I had said many, many times that uh, platinum is extremely undervalued. And I did expect that in the long term, we're going to trade a lot higher. But now, even shorter term speaking, from a technical perspective, after that break above 875, I'm you know bullish even in the short to medium term. Uh, so that's what I think about platinum. Uh, when do I reckon is a good time to buy gold? You know, once again, I'm going to have to tell you what I just was saying Good time to be buying gold was when it was breaking out above 1360. It is probably still a good time to buy gold if you have a very long term horizon. Because if you're asking me if it's a good time to buy gold for a week, I wouldn't be doing that, right? Uh, I wouldn't be buying gold for a short term trade, uh, you know, up here. I mean, it can still move higher, undoubtedly, but what is your risk reward? I mean, there's no risk reward at the moment. So, you know, although it might be moving higher from here, um, you know, I wouldn't be buying it for a short-term trade. If you want to buy it for a, you know, rather short to medium-term trade, I would gladly do so if it back-tested 1750. So 1750 would be a nice area to load up on gold if we get to see that again. Now, if you're looking to buy even higher, 1820 is another area of interest. So 1820, 1750, these are areas that you can buy and at least make an argument that you have a risk reward uh, that makes some sense, right? Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, unless you just want to buy it and hold it for the long term, which is, I think it's still going to prove to be, you know, a good trade um, and you're willing to tolerate being out of the money for a period of time, which might happen, uh, you know, I wouldn't be buying. Mm, hey, buddy. Go. Do we have an interview, Dale? No. Mm -hmm. Ah, we don't. Okay. Where are my from, Steve? I'm from Athens, Greece. Born and raised both parents Greek. Um, let me see if there is any questions I didn't cover. I think more or less. Oh, uh, no, I covered those ones. Euro pounds, EU recovery fund. Yeah, EU recovery fund is more or less of a joke. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. And USD card. So USD card, Euro pound, and then I'm going to wish you all a lovely weekend and a lovely week because next week I'm not going to be here. I might just pop up. So USD card, USD card uh, diverging. It's quite interesting, meaning, you know, we're still above the previous uh, low there. You know, my longer term thesis, I do believe that the Canadian dollar uh, is one of the few currencies that might actually still underperform the dollar. 
so I wouldn't be short the USD card. I think you know if I if I want to be uh, short the dollar, which I do, I'd rather do it against other currencies as I as, I, uh, as I've been uh, doing. But also, if I want to be long the dollar. Uh, you know, I'd probably do it against the Canadian, as I've said before, because the Canadian looks, you know, rather weak against the vast majority of the currencies. Now, I wouldn't be buying it yet because I'm not looking to buy dollars. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm still monitoring this descending channel, which I do think at some point we're going to see quite a nice move higher from it. But until we see that, I would probably not be doing much about it. Okay, so I don't see a trade I like here in USD CAD. Um, so I wouldn't be really, you know, making an argument one way or another as we speak. Now, having to do with Euro Pound, I think the situation here with Euro Pound is rather clear from a technical perspective, and it's the following. We still remain in this ascending channel. I have to say that the manner in which we've been moving in this in this channel doesn't look impulsive in any way to me. Stelios has argued before that he likes shorting 93 cents, uh, and I have to say that I wouldn't I wouldn't really go against him. He he has a very good uh, you know um, understanding of the dynamics of euro pound. So another push higher towards this confluence, you know, 93 93 20 would be an excellent opportunity to be short. Uh, but if you want to wait for more confirmation, I think the simplest thing you can do is wait for the euro pound to break through this channel strand line support. Once that happens, I think that at least for a short period, there's going to be some more weakness coming in the market. And that's probably going to be a nice trade. Until that happens, uh, you know, if you're long, you have no reason to exit your position. If you have no position at the moment, you know, we're more or less in the middle of this channel, so I don't really see any risk Point reward. Us. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't really see any risk reward doing anything with it. And to finish up with this, somebody's asking about the pound. Um, you know, I said some time ago that the pound was looking like it would break higher from here, retest 128.13, the previous high, and probably end up retesting the long term descending channel. There it is. And I still think we're on our way there. Now, the question is, will it follow with a delay the euro? Because the euro was trading in an equivalent long-term descending channel and it has broken above. My gut feeling tells me that it will. Uh, but let's first get to that channel, passes roughly from 129 as we speak, and we take it from there. Okay. So, everybody, have a lovely weekend. And... Have a well-deserved rest, Steve, and vacation, recharge your battery. We have a lot of things ahead of us this fall. Indeed. It's going to be okay. quite a busy year. And from the company's perspective, uh, there are going to be quite a few major developments. We're in the going year parabolic, ahead. man. Yeah, I think, I think people <laughs> will, uh, will be quite happy about them. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, where are you going? Deal. Think going to an deal. island? Um, it's actually by definition, it's an island. We can yeah. do a little bit of geography. So, uh, I can show you. It's a, you know, it is an island. It's a very big island near Athens, which is called Devia. This, this is the one. This is huh. the one. The the big one here. Uh, oh. So here's Athens, and this big uh, island. It is actually typically an island because it's it's being con it, it connects oh, it's like an via, isthmus. via bridge. Yes, it, it connects via bridge there. Okay. Uh, so we're going to a place called the Retria. Um, it's uh, here in the south area of um, Evia. It's nice. You know, nice warm seas. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy, yeah. bro. Thank you. And you yeah. don't have to go via boat or uh, you drive ship, there. you know. Yeah, you, you could drive, drive there. one hundred. It's a one. Hour, it's a one hour, one and a half hours drive, so it's no, yeah. no big deal. Nice. All right. Well, yeah. uh, we'll miss you, and miss have you a good time. But I'll bet you a hundred bucks that you pop into a webinar next week. 
Yeah, I will. I will. I will definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Take the bed or pop in? <laughs> I'll, I'll anyway. pop in, show you All a little right. bit of of the oh, uh, okay. Grixes yeah. and you know the sand and everything All right. else. A little bit of the travel section of Forex <laughs> analytics. <Okay. laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Listen, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us. <clears throat> uh, we're doing our best to lay it out on the court every week to build you up, edify you. And we're always glad to add value. Hope we're accomplishing what we're setting out to do. All right, Richard, Skip, Scott, everyone, have a great weekend. You're welcome, Brock, David, and uh, enjoy recharge like Steve. Get ready for another, you know, could be another wild week. So adios. See you, Steve. Bye-bye. Remember, coach. don't Bye just everybody. count your pips and your count gold your coins blessings. and your silver bars. Count your blessings. Indeed. All right. Adios. Bye-bye.